If you get that and cannon, team fights are almost too easy. Yeah, they certainly are. They just add so much utility and damage through their kits. And talk about a pick away. We've mentioned how good Ella is yeah. at playing this Jana and peeling with it. Ooh, they actually, at the last second, swap over to a Corky. And is that dangerous here against Crystal? Because, of course, Corky, not the highest range. Does this mean that Draven could be coming in? Yeah, Draven definitely can come in. I still think that Corky does beat Draven in lane, especially okay. levels 1 to 4. Um, I really don't like seeing uh, the Jana go through. That's that's the thing that worries me. It's not the Corky pickup so much. I don't think they were in risk of picking that one away. Yep. I think that now there is just so many options for a hyper carry to be utilized because it is so hard to get through Jana in the mid late game. Yeah, and it's actually Barker putting a lot of pressure on this Azir here as well. So wanting to pick that one up, of course, has played it a lot just recently. Only a couple of games on his Zerath, but picking up the Azir over and over again. But this might mean that we see Dade's Zerath in response because that has been a lot of the counter pick to come through. And Zerath has been leaving us wanting just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. He he still looks solid on the champion. So I don't think you can take too much away from him. I just yeah. think that Barker's Zerath is better than Dade's Zerath. But in saying that, Barker has gone with the Azir this time around and it does leave the counter pick up. And let's see if Dade opts into it. In the past, he has been uh, known to, I guess, try and take some other people's champion pool away from them and utilize it. And... Instead, they go towards a very, very tanky front line. I like the Rengar. I like the Nar pickup. That gives them a lot of team fight presence. Going with a Morgana, though. Yeah, and possibly a Morgana for the top side of the map. Could be a Morgana in support here as well. But it actually, it's not going to be the top because, of course, Nar has been locked in. And Dade, very vocal there from the mid lane, trying to make sure that they get the team comp that they want. And Barker and Crystal now to try and sort of round out the Snake lineup and then M3 can respond with the comp that they want at that point. And we'll see whether Dade has any surprises for us as Rumble. That could be a very, very scary notion. They've definitely got a lot of zone control with this team. If they lock in the Rumble, which they have, as My well gosh. as the Azir, they have a lot of zone control. The danger here is if they don't get a very big hyper carry for Crystal, Nar is going to be able to go from that Hex Drinker into something like a Banshee's Veil and just be so hard to deal with from a frontliner perspective and both very short range mages. Yeah, it's very, very scary. And because the Morgana was locked in here for M3, they're looking at a potential Callista. Okay, yeah, good. Because Corky's already been locked in. I was very, very confused. But this is China. Crazy things happen in the picking phase. Yeah, certainly does. A little bit more standard. Zareth and Lee Sin look to be the pickups there. And Overall, a very good, uh, I guess, disengage comp coming through from Masters 3. They have a lot of anti-dive through Lee Sin and Morgana. Uh, the Black Shield helping a lot in those situations. You do feel, though, that if this gets extremely late, having two magic damage threats, meaning you have to itemize for that magic damage in the early yeah. game, means that Crystal will ramp up extremely quickly. You throw him on a hyper carry. I was thinking Draven. Jinx, just as good, probably the best late game oh, ranged yeah. hyper carry if she can get going. They've got a very, very long journey ahead of them here, uh, Masters 3, to really turn this one around. Yeah, do you think that they have to be putting on the pressure very early on? Because that could be very hard here against the likes of a Rumble who is just so frightening in the mid game. Yeah, I, th I think it's the opposite. I think they actually go towards Looper's lane. I think that Looper is on deal with Crystal duty here. Okay. He needs to get into his face, CC him for a long time. Of course, if she can't get excited and run around these team fights, it's very, very easy to lock down a Jinx. And he's got that Black Shield coming through from Love CD to be able to mitigate a lot of Jhana's disengage. So throw the Black Shield on this Nar, get him transformed, get him into the face of the AD carry, make him disrupt, and then everyone else is on Dade to really be able to poke out these team fights with Corky, with Zareth. Fantastic poke coming through. Yeah, and as you can see, this is going to be the lineups coming through. And of course, Nar versus Rumble. And it's going to be, as you mentioned, a little bit tough here for Looper, but Beast on the Rek'Sai here as well. And we haven't seen him on this champion too much is the pretty standard Sharima matchup here in the mid lane. Yeah, certainly. And I think this one will be a real test of Dade. Looking to forward to see how he performs. And Corky versus Jinx should go in Corky's favor very heavily early game. Yeah. Jinx, of course, can farm safely, but does get poked out of that lane. So pressure on Crystal to be able to perform. Yeah, and I mean, I guess if Crystal does manage to get sort of a lead in this lane, he does have the rockets to have a lot of extra poke damage from range, of course, because of that switcheroo giving him so much extra. But... 
as you mentioned, you know, Phosphorus Bomb into a Shame proc, pretty scary stuff coming through from a Corky. Yeah, it certainly is, and it's just, I guess, the steroid on the Q, as you mentioned, does help with the one item spike, but comparatively, uh, Trinity Force just adds so much hidden damage where Infinity Edge does not, and that's what we generally see out of the uh, Jinx yeah. first. So really does need into that uh, ZL, into another BF Sword, get it ramping up, and as I said, terrific late-game potential, but just... On that first item spike, very hard. Yeah, a little bit difficult, but let's get onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with game one between Masters 3 and Snake. This is going to be a big one for our second match of the day. We'll see how it works out. Of course, Snake vying for that second spot. Of course, with OMG actually splitting with EDG last night, there is a little bit of a spot there at the top of the standings. Yeah, there certainly is. They can be outright second if they're able to take a game here. So I think they're a match behind. So they haven't played as many as yep. EDG or OMG. So I think they've played 12 matches. This is the 12th match coming through now for Snake. Um, so... See how they deal with it. And Flandre, no stranger to this rumble. Picked it up oh, a lot at yeah. the start of the season. Has actually seen a lot of bans towards him on this champion as well. Yeah, certainly has. And I'm, I'm excited that he's decided to pick it up again because he played it fantastically. Look for his teleports. He rushes home guards extremely early on a lot of his champions. And he does try and get around the map and help his other lanes out. Yeah, and you're talking about Looper possibly rushing that Hex Drinker. Already has the Longsword in his back pocket. So that is looking to be the first pick up here. As do you think there could be a potential lane swap situation coming in? Because we can see both AD carries heading towards this top side of the map. Yeah, this is actually really well scouted out of the Masters 3 lineup. They were trying to dodge it on the Snake side. They actually showed Rumble top lane and then walked him all the way back down. And Masters 3, recognizing that, spotted it out, match it straight away. And there's actually a ward here on the top side of the map here as well. So Crystal going to be spotted heading towards this top side. Has actually found Candy here as well. So we are going to have standard lanes breaking out. You can see the minions already collapsing, so unable to really turn this one around. Love City taking a lot of damage from Ella here, who has that shield in order to make things a little bit better. Rocket's going to solidify that half as an HP mark. Yeah, and look, the hard push coming out straight away. They actually picked up the pool as the first point coming out of Love CD. So that's why he wasn't using any items to trade there. And they're looking to get this one shoved in, put a lot of pressure on with the poke underneath the turret. Yeah, and is this going to be really important as far as Candy getting to level 2 as well? How does this lane go as far as levels are concerned? Yeah, I think across the board, uh, for uh, as long as Corky keeps shoving, he'll stay ahead in levels and therefore uh, we'll be able to push uh, Crystal around in lane. Uh, the only thing is that there's not a lot of magic damage to break the uh, Black Shield that comes out of Love CD. So Candy's going to be able to shrug off a lot of the CC. Ooh, good find. Yeah, Burelian Dark Binding there on the top side. Crystal takes half of his health. Yeah, so he'll be able worse. to shrug off a lot of the CC. And with Rek'Sai coming in for an Umbarrel as well, that's an absolutely devastating combo because if you're able to not break through that shield, Rek'Sai not going to be able to get his lock up. Yeah. Going to have to deal with Dark Binding as he's uh, coming through. And all those creep waves that are going to keep building in the top lane because of how heavy they're pushing are just going to make it an absolute nightmare. Oh, Beast is going to head towards his red buff here as well. Our jungle is just more than happy clear out their own jungles. No funny business is going to be going on early on in this match. Masters 3 actually already with a little bit of an advantage based on the farm here. As you can see, Looper able to bully Flandre here on the bottom side. Yeah, and we've seen this a lot as the Rumble versus Nah matchup continues to come through that Nah seems to be able to get the better of it now with some smart pathing, with a lot of harass in the early game, being able to shove out the wave. It does put a, uh, I guess, a little bit of uh, added... Uh, finesse into the rumble pickup because he has to be able to see us under the turret like we're seeing right now and it is it, it's difficult at times yeah Flandre as you can see missing out on a couple there but of course a very practiced rumble player is Barker going to continue to push out these waves actually staying very very competitive here in this lane ahead 5 CS against Dade Zareth yeah there's 5 CS right there though for Dade to be able to pick up and I think this is what we see up until about level 7 when you've got some points in that queue Zareth does get pushed around a little bit at the early stage of course Azir able to spam out those Sam soldiers so I think that's the way it will go and then Dade once he does charge up that queue able to clear out the waves should be able to get on top of this uh, lane yeah, and you can see despite a little bit of funny business going on early on in the M3 lane towards the top side, everything is still going to be very, very even 
moving forward. And we'll see whether Crystal can stay ahead because you have to think that when the Sheens, when the Phages start coming through here for Candy, things are going to look a little bit better for Corky. Yeah, it certainly will. And across the map, we're seeing very, very, I guess, slow play coming out of both sides. M3 have actually been able to control a lot of early games and really have struggled in the transitioning point of the game. And they're looking to take it again, again, once again, nice and slow, not pressuring too hard. Although Beast is now looking for his first gank onto Looper, decides against it. Yeah, he's just going to move around, get some vision out here as well. Has a few tunnels hanging. As Dream's going to pop down a pink ward and take away that Scuttle Crab. We'll see whether he removes this tunnel as well. Actually decides not to. Not going to give away his position here. Yeah, so just deciding to walk around. Maybe doesn't want to give up the position of the pink ward, more importantly. Because um, if you have that much confidence to walk into the enemy jungle right there. Um, I like the wards that are coming out of Beast on the other side of the map. He's warded up the try, so there's no danger of anyone sneaking into that lane. He's now put another ward on top of the wraiths, trying to just catch a look of where Dreams is. Because Lee Sin versus Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai extremely so strong through CC, does a lot of damage when that uh, rage bar is full. But Lee Sin, if gets the jump, does so much work early game. Oh yeah, that's sort of the point of a Lee Sin pickup here as well, because of course his early ganking pressure via damage is so incredibly strong. This is something that I learned from yourself, Mr. Jake Spawn Tiberi. Yeah, and Dream's really smart. They're smiting away the Raptor, gets the buff, so he's able to clear out that ward. So the ward did its job. It spotted where Dreams is. Buys a little bit more uh, pressure relief coming out of the Snake lineup. They've been able to push through here. Uh, even got a free back in the mid lane by some good pushing coming out of Barker. So they're extremely comfortable where this game is currently. Well, you can see both of these mid laners, though, have headed back. They've both picked up exactly the same items here as well. Both look to be going towards that Morel and Omicron. But it could be the Athenes on Holy Grail, of course, builds out of those components as well as Crystal gets some nice harass down here into Candy using the, those rockets. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Athenes on uh, Dade side, just because Zareth, of course, wants to spam his abilities. Athenes is more gold effective if you're below about 500 mana, of course, because you get a little bit more of that regen coming through. But we see now this lane actually swapping. Once that shield's been able to get some points and it adds some of the AD coming through, just the pushing power coming out of Crystal, too much for Corky to deal with. And this is a problem that we see with Corky's fairly often. They have to decide whether they want to harass with that phosphorus bomb or counter push their lane. And it looks like Crystal able to relieve a lot of pressure with these AOE rockets. Yeah, and you can see Barker still managing to clear out this wave here as well. But Look, Zap coming through doesn't quite find its mark, but you're exactly right. This snake lineup able to really put the pressure on. And does that have a lot to do with the fact that they spotted Dreams out here as well? And this earl early warding from Beast knows that they're definitely going to be safe? Yeah, exactly right. Spotting out Dreams meant that they knew exactly where the jungler was and they can start trying to push the lane back. And as I said, as soon as they got the three points into that Eye of the Storm, they were just able to use their, all that bonus AD to shove out the wave. Yeah, Dreams, though, has found his way up to this top side now. And, of course, Snake, they're going to know because, of course, they haven't had vision of him for too long. And by they know, that means that they just know that he's somewhere and they have no idea where. Yeah, exactly right. But they would expect him to be maybe on the top side of the map because he handed over the blue very recently. And we'll see a gank here. Yeah, Safeguard actually going to come through. Sonic Wave does land here as well as Dreams actually flash kicks Crystal. There's the pull and the Phosphorus Bomb for the kill. But Flandre, he's come in. They try to answer this one, but the counter teleport from Looper is too frightening as he's perfectly in that Megana. Yeah, and already the mid laners had rotated up. It was Flandre that got the beat to the top laners with a quick teleport, but Dade had rotated quicker than Bucker, and that's why they had to back away. So very nice play coming out of Masters 3 there. Fantastic kick out of Dreams. He'll lose his red buff because of it, but first blood over onto Candy, who's been able to pick up that Sheen. Lane rolling for Corky. Oh, yeah, almost has that phage completed as well, and then needs another about 600 gold for that. And the really important part of this pickup is that Ruby Crystal. Going to give him so much more tanky stats in order to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Crystal. Yeah, and it's only against a BF sword, so that is a big item discrepancy now. And it looks like they will once again meet in the bottom lane this time around. Yeah, both of the top laners now relegated back to where they originally wanted to go. And the dragon probably going to be the focus here coming through. Dark Finding going to find Barker. Love City being fantastic with that one. Black Shields himself and uses the Soul Shackles as well. There's the other ultimates to come down from the rest of the team. But Dreams just gets eliminated. Yeah, that was really weird play coming out of Masters 3. Overcommitted with only a support and so low health on Dreams, who wasn't able to, I guess, get any abilities off, wasn't able to affect the fight. This might give the first dragon over to Snake. 
Yeah, Masters 3 sort of with an, a genius play to start off, but unable to follow it up. And losing the junglers mean, means that they might actually lose the dragon here as well as that one's going to fall down. Yeah, and in the top lane, we saw a lot of pressure coming out of Looper. Ooh. Oh, Crystal, you're in so much trouble. There's a flash into the rocket here as well, but the knockup onto Love CD, of course, doesn't have the black shield. That one was on Candy. Nice dark binding. The phosphorus bomb on two members here as well. A snake will have to back away, but they get a dragon for it. Yeah, they certainly got the dragon, and they, I guess, relieved a lot of map pressure. Flandre is still being bullied in this top lane, but has been able to equalize the CS, so he's going fine now, but... That's, I guess, the benefit of running a Morgana into a team comp that doesn't have much magic damage in the bottom lane or jungle because we saw how much CC was mitigated just from that black shield. Yeah, and it was almost it almost had to be timed out here on the side of Snake as opposed to actually breaking it with some magic. You sort of need to have your Azir and Rumble down there before anything's going to happen as far as the magic damage situation, but they're going to be relegated to solo lanes. Yeah, they certainly are. So we see that... Beast trying to play a visit. He's getting more deep wards, getting a uh, vision of Dreams one more time. Has been able to keep up in farm and subsequently level. So Dreams, whilst pulling off a very good first gank, um, did die in response and lost one of his buffs. So being hurt a little bit on this uh, experience front. Yeah, you can see both of the jungles, relatively similar items here as well, but the boots able to be picked up by Beast. He's going to be able to rocket around that jungle just a little bit quicker. As Dade takes a lot of damage, answers with a very nice stun, though, as Bark uses that E just to escape from the stun. Yeah, and Dade's performing pretty poorly now in this mid lane. He's fallen behind in CS, just being shoved out of lane. He's trying to stick around and pick up as much farm as he can, but he needs to be careful that he doesn't get dove here. He doesn't know where Rek'Sai is. Yeah, his eye is in on that shocking orb, but Flandre is going to, of course, use that equalizer to clear out this wave. He, his spidey senses were tingly. He spotted someone in that top side and just going to use that ultimate just to make sure that he doesn't need to stick around. Yeah, and very nice play as we have a little bit of an engage. Yeah, there's the Soul Shackles coming through from Buff City, but he gets exploded as the Super Mega Death Rocket comes through. Candy answers, and both AD carries gets a kill, but Candy, he's going to be able to stick around. Yeah, he certainly is, and they saw Beast somewhere in the river, so d uh, Candy didn't over-pursue, and he's really the bright spot now coming through for this team. And oh, Dade, the flash out of the way of the Umbara here as well, but the Chilling Smites there. Beast gets stunned up by the Shocking Orb, but the red buff slow is available. Dreams, he's going to take down Barker on the backside. Not entirely sure how that happened. Right of the Arcane going to find Beast here with a couple of shots as now Looper comes down and Beast, you are definitely dead. Double kill for Dreams. Yeah, we saw Dreams try and give that one across to Looper. I don't think he did want a last hit. It would have been great on Nah, but overall, what a turnaround. Dade being able to use both summoner spells and some fancy footwork to get away in his jungle and good collapse coming out of Masters 3. On the top side of the map, looks like they have some great communication. Oh, yeah, and of course, Looper and Dade, of course, both from Samsung lineups. They know how to talk to one another. You can definitely say that as Flandre. He's going to get the hell away from his tower. Looper's going to come through here now and just clear out these creeps and has a lot of pressure, of course. That tower is still at about half health, so no risk of really dying too quickly as Void Rush going to be used by Beast just to get back into his jungle. Of course, killing a Rek'Sai doesn't mean that she's not still too far away. Yeah, of course, using that ult especially during the early mid game, just to get back into the jungle a little, uh, jungle a little bit quicker. Once you have that tunnel network set up, it's just so easy and satisfying to farm on Rek'Sai. It gives you a lot of time in lanes as well because you just zip around the map. And we'll look to now pick up the blue buff for his mid laner, Baka, continuing to put out pressure. And, he, and Candy actually picking up the Sorcerer shoes very early, sort of focusing on that poke damage with the Rockets and Phosphorus Bomb. And is that a good idea here in this lane against Crystal? Yeah, I think that it was more of the fact that he had a gold threshold after that last kill and he didn't, couldn't finish off his Trinity Force. Zeal not really that fantastic of an item in the laning phase. So was looking to, I guess, maximize how much damage he can do in lane against Flandre, uh, against uh, Crystal, and be able to, I guess, keep exerting pressure. Yeah, Beast is going to be able to steal away this red buff, though. You can see Snake have so much vision around this side of the map. Dragon going to be up in a minute and a half. And Beast has been spotted, but successful steal to come through and sort of a 14 minute three buff situation coming through for Snake. Yeah, and let's take a look at the top lane. Very questionable decision coming out of Looper here as maybe a bit of action in the bottom. Yeah, a little bit of action coming through. Of course, Love City getting another nice Soul Shackles. There's a kick on a Crystal back into Candy. Delivered some money there as the next 
It's a poor play going to fall down here as well. Ella dies at the same time. Nice plays coming through from M3. Yeah, Love CD electing to uh, use a black shield on uh, himself this time around because recognizing he was all the CC and as long as he could keep up, he would be able to keep his team in range. Very good play once again from Dreams, having a terrific Lee Sin game. This will mean a lot of pressure in the bottom lane. Might even be able to pick up the first turret. Could be possibly a turret. Of course, that dragon up in another 50 seconds, so probably not that one. As Empress Divide comes through onto Dada, he's in so much trouble and just dead in the mid lane. Yeah, Beast picking up that kill once again. Would have preferred it to go over to the Barker, but that means they'll be able to respond to Zero, of course, ripping through turrets. So being able to get through this one, maybe even push into the second, uh, the tier two. And they're looking to really shove back. Yeah, and you can, this is a zero on a 5.2 patch as well. Still incredibly strong. Almost like that hyper carry here in this late game as Barker actually going to find Dreams. Chilling Smite to come through from Beast here as well. The attack on the Sand Soldiers is destroying Dreams. And that Black Shield, not enough. Yeah, and that was a very poor decision coming out of Dreams. A little bit overconfident. Decided to go in for the Warden. Paid for it with his life. That's a shutdown. Once again, going on to Beast who looks like he is going tanky, so he might not be able to put it towards the best effect, but so Soul Tank lineup, they'll take it. Oh, yes. Freysig are going to find Candy and Love City here. And this is what, uh, another thing I want to mention about Snake here as well, is we've been talking about Crystal, the fact that he's often the hard carry for the team, but the thing that makes Snake so incredibly good is that they can adapt on the fly to who's going to be getting this gold, and now it looks like Barker really wants to be picking that one up as Beast able to transfer a lot of his progression into that mid lane is another dragon gonna fall. Yeah, a lot of poke coming out of this team. Teleport behind. Yeah, Looper's jumping in. There's the double R into the whole bottom lane. Instantly destroyed by the ultimate. Dade might pay for it, but no. The rest of his team's there. Flandre just launches himself into the fight. Somehow Dade survives. And there's in fact the ult to come down as well to secure the kill onto Beast. And they may have got the dragon, but they lost four of their friends. Yeah, four for nothing. Dangerous game coming through for Dade, keeping him aligned even though he got dove very heavily from Flandre. And that aggressive item build paid off because we saw how much damage came out of Looper. He looks like he's going for a phage after the Hex Drinker, and he just absolutely tore through them. Oh, Empress Divide onto Dreams here as he kicks Barker away. He's definitely dead. Dreams just meanders on around that Empress Divide and watches that rocket just soar past him as well. Dreams is having a fantastic game on this Lee Sin. Yeah, so in the end, that was a clean ace if you take into account the whole five kills that came across and the turret. And Dade was able to roam bot and pick up a lot of farm. So he's only 12 behind. Has two kills as well, looking very good as we see the replay. So Looper flashes in here and uses uh, the ultimate, doesn't use the bounce, and then gets back in his team. The impressive thing is how they collapse on Flandre here. As a team recognizing he needs to die right now, even pulling Candy back to keep Dade alive, who then uses his ultimate to get another kill over onto the AD carry. Beautiful play from M3. And this is not the team fighting that we're used to seeing from these guys. A little bit disjointed sometimes, but... So far this game have been looking fantastic as Crystal cheekily gets excited after taking down that outer turret in the bottom side of the map. Second turret now for Snake going to be answering M3, but 4,000 gold is the lead now to come through after the, that massive kills towards that dragon. But M3 still need to try and keep their eye on that particular objective because they're down two to nothing. Yeah, they certainly are. I don't think it, they have to worry about it too much. I would give up two dragons for a 3,000 gold lead Oh yeah, by the 18-minute mark. So they're definitely in the driver's seat here. I guess we've seen them have good early games before. They need to continue it now. Yeah, Looper in a bit of trouble here as Ella's coming up as well. The Umbaro under Looper. Black Shield's going to be available. Dark Binding, Soul Shackles under three members as Dreams comes through. Love City manages to pick up the stun and the Disengage is there. Yeah, so Disengage comes through. Neither mid laner, so not much damage coming out after Looper and Flandre were chunked. Both teams just deciding to back off. But what that means, a lot of pressure in this bottom lane because Corky compared to Jinx at the moment. BF and Trinity Force against only Infinity Edge Zeal. Candy is having a field day here, two levels ahead. Just terrifying as, oh my gosh, Flandre not quite able to stay alive, but that out of turret is definitely dead. 
Andre going to head back to base. And I say not quite able to stay alive. He was just able to stay alive. Yeah, so able to get away with his life. Also will be able to keep the turret up because Looper doesn't want to have to overstay there. He's very low as well. Actually stops his cancel uh, back, so he will stay for the turret. So very aggressive play coming through here, and he's able to do that because Love CD is also there. Um, so looking to now pick up the last outer turret, maybe start to group looking for these fights. Yep, Sun Turret is going to fall down in the mid lane, though. So, of course, that outer turret had already fallen. And this is where the confusion starts, ladies and gentlemen. First Sun, sun Turret actually falling. That is three turrets dead. One Sun Turret. Yeah, it certainly three. is. And more importantly, it's a 4,000 gold lead for Masters 3. And they have a very good scaling comp. This isn't a comp where you would say that it falls off extremely hard. Zareth, great late game. Corky, we've seen that he's actually turning... Into, I guess, he's surprising people with how much late game damage he outputs, especially if he goes his Bloodthirster route. And I think that uh, Candy has shown that he's pretty proficient on the champion, and any AD carry at 5 0 and 4 is going to bring the pain. Yeah, and there's the fact that you can also sort of go this Bloodthirster into the um, Last Whisper and then Infinity Edge, and you've got this gigantically expensive build in the late game that a lot of champions can't actually afford to, b to make. Yeah, it's like the luxury item build, and the yeah. good thing there is that if you get that. RNG, Sheer, uh, Sheen, Crit Proc out of your Infinity Edge. You just chunk squishy so much. And that Valkyrie is such a good uh, positioning move around these team fights. Not really much that can get onto Candy here and really lock him down, especially when you put that Black Shield in there. So I think a lot of pressure now transfers onto the AD carry. And we mentioned him in the early game. People focus on Dade. Candy's been able to, uh, I guess, get on top of that this time around. Yeah, 5-0 and 4. Zap, not going to find Love City as those mobility boots allowing, allowing him to zip around this jungle and get all the vision down that he wants. Baron has just spawned here as we have a minute towards the next dragon. And Snake may not make as many aggressive moves towards that particular objective, especially not with Crystal so low in comparison to this Corky. Yeah, and you see the poke damage that comes through. Crystal able to trade back pretty well, especially now that that Dark Binding miss might even look to go aggressive, but needs to be careful. A lot of support coming now towards this bottom lane. It's been scouted out by Masters 3. Snake, the more they concentrate on this side of the map, the more it plays into Masters 3 hand because they've really beaten them to the punch a couple of times now. Yeah, and look at all the vision here for Masters 3 as well. I mean, they have this whole Dragon Pit area on lockdown. And on the top side of the map, I mean, Looper, he's already got a Banshee's Veil and that Phage giving him so much extra movement speed. He's so quick and so immovable from this top side. Yeah, he certainly isn't. It's because he isn't worried currently about uh, the bottom side of the map. He's stuck on split pushing duty here. I think they're valuing keeping Looper up there and pressuring Flandre more than they are of turning him to a team fight presence. So he's got a very good split push build. And you can see in the top lane, Flandre's health starting to flash red again. He's doing a great job. Yeah, it's very, very frightening. And this is the world-class performance top, though. that we were looking for. Looper not going to be unborrowed on as that bounce is there. Of course, only managed to get one proc of that one. But Masters 3 able to pick up their first dragon here uncontested. And the push continues here. And this is a different M3 to what we're used to seeing. Yeah, and shades of the old Looper dragging people around the map, using his teleport beautifully at the first, uh, second dragon fight. Now three members had to respond to him, and this is going to mean a dragon and a bottom tier, uh, bottom tier two turret. Yeah, Beast actually, that was a wonderful on Burrow, but not going to matter as the inner turret going to fall down, and they may not stop here as Barker's the only one to defend with... Crystal and Ellard off to the side. There's Rider the Arcane to come down. Bark has to go back to base. Yeah, he actually missed two of oh, them, Dada, as Dream's going very aggressive. Yep, Shocking Orb going to come through here as well as Crystal just takes half of his health from two spells. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Dada with that three item spike, got the Rabbidon's Death Cut, is starting to absolutely destroy in these sieges. Throw on the fact that very fed Corky is out there, and they're finding it hard to cope with. Oh yeah, Crystal does have fairly good wave clear as Beast actually found Dade, flashes over the wall, there's the hill, Equalizer in a beautiful position, Zap not going to find anything as Snake, they're trying to engage Love City over the side, gets Crystal excited as the Chompers come down, Looper trying to get in amongst it but doesn't have Mega Nudges yet, Candy gets caught, there's another kill for Crystal, Dream's going to fall down, 
Barker picks up the kill. Looper is gigantic in this fight, and Crystal has finally died, but Barker's there for the damage, and Dade finds himself the only one alive. A nice shocking all gonna find it, but there's the one-two punch, and Barker scores the ace. Yeah, and what a fantastic turnaround. Once again, Flandre quicker on the teleport than uh, Looper in the top lane. Perfect equalizer coming through, and Snake off that have relieved all of the map pressure. Yeah, and that is an outright last whisper here as well for Crystal. He got three kills in that last fight alone, and that was what he needed to try and get back into it. And let's have a look at it again. Yeah, so look how much earlier Flandre is here and nails the equalizer. That means that on the other side, Looper has joined so late and just doesn't have the Mega Nar up. They continue to try and fight this one. Looper actually gets a lot of work done. Remember, he's got two damage items and is extremely potent in this fight. Gets a fantastic Nar and bounces on Beast to be able to take him out in that fight. But it really from there, didn't look great because there was just so much persistent damage coming through from this Azir. He was completely untouched. He walked through the jungle in that fight and was just able to get on top of all of the carries and put out the damage. Yeah, beautifully played from Snake. And it had a lot to do with the fact that Looper didn't get Mega Nar at the right time in that fight there as well. Because, of course, the Nar that he managed to pick up was beautiful, but Candy wasn't alive anymore. Yeah, it certainly was. And I think that it was uh, more to the point that Love CD went down before the second tick of the ultimate went off. Yeah. Which just meant that he had to flash defensively away, wasn't able to stay up. And he has gone a relatively squishy build here. So not much health coming through. Going for that cleanse for his AD carry and all that extra AP. Um, so, I guess, definitely a good build coming out, but not what they need out of their uh, Morgana. Really needs to be a little bit tankier. Yeah, and um, I had a little bit of a Google because Flandre, he's built the Twin Shadows. He's got some spooky ghosts in his arsenal now. Yeah, and I like that because this is turning into a brawl-heavy game, and spooky ghost definitely a good item to be able to start these fights, but... M3, they've started the Baron. They've been spotted by a Great Ward. Yeah, they didn't manage to see that Ward. Dade's going to be right out in front of it. Spooky Ghost to come in and M3. Ha-ha. That item already paying dividends. Yeah, it certainly is, but they didn't take any damage from it just because of how tanky Looper is. Able to, I guess, re-engage this at any point they want. And there's a big split coming out of the Snake lineup. Floundre is still in the top lane. Yeah, a little bit maneuverable, though, are these Snake members as they're like giving people some movement speed and... M3, just going to head off to just say, okay, worth the shot, but we're not going to be able to take it this time. Yeah, Aaron. We see that now, Lu uh, now that Loop has picked up his two defensive item uh, offensive items, not electing to go for a Trinity Force just yet. Yeah, looks like he's moving into a Ranjuan's Omen. We'll be getting tankier as the game goes on, and I think that this is a good end game build. I actually think that Trinity Force is a last item. It's very, very potent on Nar because he does so many uh, persistent damaging abilities that he is able to get a lot of damage off in these fights because you really don't want to focus the guy. But yeah. the problem is that in the mid game, that last team fight where they needed him to be able to absorb all that damage, he wasn't able to do so. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just a phage, but you're exactly right. I mean, that could have been a Giant's Belt almost having that Randuin's completed as well, and that could have turned things around just a little bit. But Dream's now trying to clear out some more vision around this Baron Pit. And that is something that M3 have definitely been fantastic at this game, is keeping their vision up across the map throughout the game. Yeah, certainly. And they, they've played much more cohesively as a team, you have to say. So oh, yeah. They're actually forcing Snake to use their jungler as a split pusher, absorb a lot of the gold, and use his ultimate to get to the fights. Whereas on the other side, Candy's sitting bottom lane and absorbing all of this. He's finished off the last Whisper. He has a Bloodthirster and a Trinity Force. Extremely expensive three items coming through, and he's going, only going to ramp up further. Yeah, Looper is still in this top side, trying to be a menace. Red buff going to be picked up by Crystal as he tries to juke it around. The Ramble back is a little bit upset, but he's going to take it without actually doing any damage to Crystal. Crystal probably wanted to finish off either that Static Shiv or the Phantom Dancer fairly soon. And really nice positioning from Snake there. Oh, speaking of positioning from Snake, L actually eats a Dark Barney, but Beast really wants this fight. Shocking Orb to come through to disengage. And the members of M3 are going to escape. Arcano Pulse onto Barker takes a lot of his health away as Crystal takes a slow there as well. Yeah, and so the win conditions have completely swapped on this map. I think that Snake have recognized that with the Azir, with the Jinx, look for late game, look for picks through all of the uh, CC they bring with Ala, with the uh, knockups coming through from Beast. But don't panic, don't push it too far because they're able to fight in, uh, in closed positions very well. M3 on the other hand, really need to get the game going because 
they don't want to let this one go too late. Yeah, you can see his fight might actually break out here as Flandre holding onto that equalizer, wants to get it in the right position. Shocking Orb going to go wide here as well as Beast wants to start something up in the back line. Soul Shackles only onto him here as we've got the ult coming through from Dade, but not finding anything to actually get the fight in the position that they want. In M3, they'll take the dragon and get out. Yeah, so they're able to pick up the dragon. They use a couple of ultimates, but in the end, because the fight didn't fully eventuate, not really going to punish them that much. Waves in their favor in top and bottom. So people are going to have to go deal with them on the side of Snake. And in the end, pick up a free objective, walk away unscathed. Yeah, and there's also the fact that Crystal has a fair bit of money here in his back pocket as well. Hasn't been back for a little while. Has 1,800 gold to his name. Going to be able to finish the Phantom Dancer or the Static Shiv if he wants to, and that three-item spike will be hit. And it is the Phantom Dancer. I love this pickup on Jinx. Yeah, it certainly is. So... Being able to get through there really, I guess, utilize his spike very well at this point. And we see that a little bit of a, I guess, lull once again in this game. We see that the uh, objectives have just dried up a little bit on the side and they're looking to, I guess, continue the farm up. Randuin's, I guess, is a big pickup here for Looper. He's been able to finish that one off and that's fantastic because now he's in a position to be extremely tanky. And Flandre going for this, uh, the Twin Shadows, although they've been great at sort of spotting M3 out across this map, and they're brilliant if you're behind in vision here as well, because you don't have to face check to find people throughout here. But did he want that Zonya's Hourglass a little bit sooner, just so that he can sort of be that golden flamethrower in the middle of a team fight? Yeah, he's been doing that anyway, and they really haven't wanted to blow him up, so I don't think it's actually hurt him too bad. And they have a lot of AP that come out of them uh, on that item. I think it's about 80 and the additional movement yeah. speed that comes through. So I actually think they're an undervalued item. Uh, oh, yeah. I love that item. I build it on a lot of things, but, I mean, I'm a bit silly. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think that it has a definite niche in here, and I think it is because of what you said. They don't want to face check. They recognize they have good team fights, so they need to be able to get vision to start it up. Yeah. So using that item as their scout, they only have one tank, and Beast can't afford to get chunked out at these fights, so gives them the ability to be able to walk towards Masters 3 when they normally wouldn't be able to. And Beast does have that Void Rush available. It's okay for him to be on the bottom side of the map here, but the rest of the members of Snake need to spot out this Baron. It's going down incredibly quickly. As you can see, they're nowhere near it. This could be a free Sneaky Baron for M3. Yeah, it certainly will be. You can't underestimate how much damage comes out of this. Ultimate comes through, not able to hit, and in the end, that's a big objective. 5,000 gold, 30 minutes in. Now the ability to siege with a Baron, Zerith, and Corky. That is huge. That is terrifying. Zap going to land onto Candy here, just take away his Bloodthirster shield. And Snake, they need to do something in order to stop this push because I don't think that Eye of the Storm is going to be quite enough. Sonic Wave finds Crystal and he has to get out of the way of this turret. Oh, somehow manages to dodge a couple of those skill shots as Shocking Orb to come through. There's the Equalizer. Everything exploding, but first it's going to be Barker falling down. Love City stops Beast from being able to come through this backline. Crystal dodges out some abilities. He's still alive, but Beast is going to fall. A double kill for Dade, and they're the only kill so far on the map. Beautiful play from M3. Yeah, it certainly was, and this will mean a couple of turrets because of how strong the Baron up minions are. They're not going back, sticking around, looking to burn through this one. Yeah, with Beast and Barker dead, Flandre and Crystal sort of without any ultimates, unable to really answer this one. The first inhibitor of the game going down for M3, and Snake's dreams of that second position are slowly slipping away. Yeah, they certainly are. Very greedy. Teleport coming out of Looper here, trying to save his... Uh, turret able to get up there pick up some farm for himself so he'll appreciate that but did leave themselves open to maybe being engaged on there and this is a surprising game out of m3 they look coordinated they look yeah. together they're a unit atlas this is bizarre <laughs> this is completely different to the m3 that we've been witnessing but what you have to mention is the fact that they've had an extra week here they had the chinese new year they had this big block of time that they could work together and work out their kinks. And it looks like they've really gone back to the drawing board and made adjustments in order to really fight back on the rift. And you can see, I mean, this might be M3 fighting for contention in the playoffs. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. And now they have those super minions in the mid lane, be able to rotate bottom, siege that one up in perfect time for the next Baron. There's just so much inherent pressure now on Snake to be able to break this one up. And the answer is that Crystal and uh, Baka in the mid lane are both very fed. They're, they're oh, to yeah. the point of the game where they can now start taking over with some great team fights. But the answers, Looper's got his Thorn Mail. 
Dade we saw there was able to use not even his ultimate to be able to take Baka off the map. And that's the danger of playing this Azir. You have to dive in there to get a lot of your damage done. And we speak about how good Zerath is if you just walk towards him. He has so much upfront burst damage. Yeah, this last in turret is going to be under fire here as Flandre just going to try and protect the base from the super creeps. You can see M3, oh. they still have this Baron. That inner turret's getting destroyed. Crystal somehow survives there as the Ride of the Arcane rains down on top of him. But that is going to spell the end of that inner turret. And Crystal will see whether he can make it back in order to save this inhibitor because Baron has now fallen off. And Snake may have an opportunity to try and get through. Shocking Orb just going to go wide of Beast as he's looking for an Umbaro opportunity to try and get in there. But you can see taking a lot of poke dreams from the backside. Crystal gets bounced on. He's somehow alive, but no, Dade takes him down as Beast is going to get focused. This could be the end of the game as Looper finishes off Landre as well. Barker and Ella find themselves the only members alive. The Korean Bastion here to now try and save the Nexus and unable to, you have to think, as the second inhibitor falls and Super Creeps are pouring into this base. Yeah, that'll be Game Atlas coming through and what a performance out of Masters 3. The outright aggression on the last turret dive. Dreams has played out of his mind. Terrific lease in game and well played to M3. Yeah, Baka answering back a little bit there with the Emperor's Divide, but it's not going to be enough. Ella flashes onto the fountain as the Nexus falls down. And 14,000 gold in the lead. What a considerable victory here for Masters 3. Yeah, and we said that it was a battle of the MP MVPs. Dade came up huge. Struggled yeah. in the early game, but ended up 6-2-6. Six, and six. But you have to say, in the bottom lane, Candy out of nowhere has had an absolute blinder. Yeah, and we were mentioning the fact that in the victories that M3 have, Candy able to really carry in that late game. He didn't wait for the late game. He was destroying throughout that whole situation, and Snake are going to have to really respect M3 coming into our next match. Yeah, they certainly do, and I think they just gave up too much early game pressure. The Lee Sin, Candy, Morgana coming through as well. So that was just a very good 3v3, and there was nothing to break that black shield. We just yeah. saw it time and time again. No CC able to go down onto this Corky. The Umbaro was completely ineffective. And to have to walk towards a Corky who has all of that damage was just devastating. Yeah, and Love CD has shown these fantastic engage moments coming through. Even in games that M3 lose, Love CD has always been fantastic at being in the right spots and landing the bindings that he needs to. Whether it be um, Dark Bindings or in fact the Death Sentence coming through from his Thresh has been looking fantastic on that champion as well. And Love City needs a lot of credit in this match. Yeah, he certainly does. And I think that the vision control really was kicked off from him yeah. as well. We saw that a lot of vision coming through from the support and jungle position. Yeah, really, really great stuff. But I want to get into the second game because I want to see whether Snake can answer back to M3. So guys, we're going to have a quick break, but we'll be back very soon soon. 